stories around the world to stories here at home. This is the National News Broadcast. A pleasant evening. I'm Dilanjali Ananda. And I am Tilina Uderapna. We begin with a quick check on tonight's top stories. The CID arrests Alagaratnam Manu Ranjan on the Attorney General's orders and a foreign travel ban has been imposed on Rishad Badiuddin. A quarantine curfew imposed in the Katunayaga Police Division. People express gratitude on price relief granted on several essential items. Ranil Vikramasinghe acknowledges that there had been a clear breakdown in security divisions during the period of the Easter Sunday attack. A fine of 12 million rupees on the captain of the new diamond ship who has pleaded guilty to the offences. Sri Lanka has been named as the second best tourist destination in the world. A massive bomb of 5,400 kilos belonging to the Second World War era explodes in Poland. And on your top local story this evening, treasurer of the project on the resettlement of displaced persons, Alagaratna Manoranjan, was arrested by the Criminal Investigation Department today. The arrest has been made according to an order directed on the CID by the Attorney General yesterday to take into custody former Minister Rishad Badiuddin and Alagaratnam Mano Ranjan. A travel ban has also been imposed on Rishad Badiuddin. Mano Ranjan has been arrested in connection with the investigations on the incident on transporting a group of voters from Putlam to Mana in 221 buses on the day of the presidential election on the 16th of November 2019. Upon being produced before the Fort Magistrate, he was ordered to be detained till the 26th of this month. Former Minister in Charge Rishad Badiuddin and Project Director Samsudin Mohammed are scheduled to be arrested on charges of misappropriation of ministry funds amounting to 9.5 million rupees due to the deployment of buses and other offences under the common property law. Police media spokesman and DIG Ajit Rohana said that six CID teams are being deployed to arrest the suspects including the former minister. A police constable employed as a security officer of parliamentarian Rishad Badiuddin was arrested in Vallavatta. DIG Ajit Rohana said he was taken into custody on the charges of negligence of duties at the time when the MP was named as a suspect. Two vehicles suspected to have been used by the parliamentarian have been apprehended along with the drivers of the vehicles. The police say that two pistols, Four magazines and 48 live bullets have also been found in the vehicles. Meanwhile, two special teams of the CID have commenced an inquiry regarding the CID releasing Riyaj Badiuddin, brother of Rishad Badiuddin, without taking legal action. The DIG also said that the investigations are being carried out on seven factors with the deployment of 60 officials. Police media spokesman and DIG Ajit Rohana said that many accusations have been launched against the police in this regard. He added that the AG has given instructions once again to the acting IGP regarding the release taken place on the 12th of this month. As a result, an investigation has commenced under the instructions of Defence Secretary Major General Kamal Gunaratna and the acting IGP. Three thousand three hundred fifty seven COVID nineteen patients have been fully cured. One hundred and thirty corona afflicted patients were identified today. A quarantine curfew has been imposed in Katunaika Police Division from five AM tomorrow until further notice. The decision has been taken following the reporting of a group of COVID-19 patients at the Katunayaka Free Trade Zone. Factories at the Free Trade Zone are able to function despite imposition of the quarantine curfew. Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavendra Serva informs that employees of the factories could use their institutional IDs as curfew permits. The curfew in effect 
in 18 police divisions in the Gampa district continues. Common transportation services have been permitted to travel across the area. However, the buses are allowed to board or leave only candidates of the GCE advanced level examination during the curfew hours in these police divisions. Measures are taken to remain close the relevant Ossusalas, Satosas and other centres for the sale of essential items to will remain closed until tomorrow. The Paliandala police station says 69 bhikkhus The Piliandala police station says 69 bhikkhus and 20 others in Pirivena in Kahapula Piliandala have been quarantined. The reason being the detection of a COVID-19 disease affliction through PCR tests in a mother of a resident bhikkhu at the Pirivena. Random PCR testings have commenced on around 3,000 employees in 26 factories in the Horna Export Processing Zone of the Sri Lanka Board of Investment today. PCR tests were also conducted today on a group of associates of COVID-19 patients in Alpitya who are connected to the Brantix cluster in Divalapitya. All of them were undergoing quarantine. Three employees of the construction company in Markula were also reported to have been inflicted with the COVID-19 disease. PCR tests have been conducted on 60 persons who have maintained contacts with them. 101 persons directed for quarantine at the Army Quarantine Center in Periakaduk Vaudia have left the centre today after successfully concluding quarantine. They were returnees to the island from Germany. Minister Dallas Alha Peruma has instructed relevant divisions to immediately subject employees at power stations to PCR tests. The minister says that he considered it as a priority task to safeguard the health of electricity workers who act with great commitment. It has been decided to restrict the number of patients arriving for treatment at the Colombo National Hospital. The clinical patients of the National Hospital are able to obtain services through telephone. Measures have been taken to conduct the public day of the Ministry of Justice according to the online system. The general public are able to present their problems to the ministry website www.moj.gov.lk. With that, it's time for our special feature to look at the global impact of the coronavirus. Iran, battling its third wave of COVID-19, smashed two grim records this week, reporting its largest number of deaths in a single 24 hours and the largest number of new infections. Meanwhile, the global coronavirus cases have breached the 38 million mark, recording more than 38.4 million cases, while over 1.09 million people have succumbed to the virus globally. The United States continues to be the worst affected country from the COVID-19 pandemic, recording the most number of cases with more than 7.8 million and the most fatalities due to the coronavirus, with nearly 215,000 patients succumbing to the virus. India and Brazil are the second and the third most affected countries from the pandemic. As many patients have recovered from the disease worldwide, India tops the number of recovered patients with more than 6 million patients recovering from the disease across the country. Russia is the fourth on the list in terms of the worst affected country due to COVID-19. Russia confirmed 14,231 new COVID-19 cases today, bringing its official number of cases to nearly 1.34 million and setting a new record for daily infections. European stock markets are mostly affected following a fairly underwhelming morning. 
Britain's economy has faced a double risk to recovery from a disorderly Brexit as the pandemic has brought down the growth. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development has warned. The charitable organization Oxfam has indicated that the response of the international community towards global food insecurity is dangerously inadvocate. The Oxfam made these observations, publishing a new report just days after Nobel Peace Prize was awarded to the United Nations World Food Programme. Three new reports have indicated that coronavirus immunity can last for months and maybe even longer. The findings have suggested that many, if not the most people, who recover from coronavirus infections are protected, at least for a period of time. The reports have further suggested that the coronavirus vaccines may be able to protect people for more than a few weeks. Pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly and Company has announced that the government-sponsored clinical trial of its COVID-19 antibody treatment, similar to the one taken by U.S. President Donald Trump, has been halted due to a safety concern. U.S. drug maker Eli Lilly said on Tuesday that the government-sponsored clinical trial of its COVID-19 antibody treatment has been put on hold because of a safety concern. A spokesperson for the pharmaceutical company said in an emailed statement, quote, out of an abundance of caution, the Active 3 Independent Data Safety Monitoring Board has recommended a pause in enrollment. Lilly is supportive of the decision by the independent DSMB to cautiously ensure the safety of the patients participating in this study. News of the pause also comes after Johnson & Johnson said on Monday that it had temporarily paused clinical trials for its COVID-19 vaccine candidates due to an unexplained illness in a study participant. Eli Lilly's drug is similar to the Regeneron Pharmaceuticals treatment President Donald Trump received after he contracted COVID-19. Lilly had already asked U.S. regulators to authorize its antibody therapy for emergency use after publishing data in September showing it helped cut hospitalization and emergency room visits for COVID-19 patients. Shares of Eli Lilly were down nearly 3% at Tuesday's close. Pope Francis stayed a safe distance from well-wishers at his weekly general audience today, citing new rules aimed at curbing the coronavirus holding him back from greeting the pilgrims. The 83-year-old Pope resumed his weekly audiences in September after a six-month break due to the contagion, which has killed more than 36,200 people in Italy. There have been concerns that Pope Francis has been getting too close to large crowds of visitors, risking coronavirus infection. But the pontiff stayed a safe distance from well-wishers at his weekly general audience on Wednesday, just two days after the Vatican announced that four members of the Swiss Guards had tested positive for COVID-19. I would like to, as I usually do, go down and get closer to greet you. But with the new regulations, it's better if we keep a distance. I also greet sick people from here. You are sitting prudently distant, as you should do. But it often happens that when I go down, everybody gets close and piles up. And it's a problem because there's a risk of infection. The 83-year-old resumed his weekly audiences in September after a six-month break because of the virus, which has killed more than 36,000 people in Italy. However, with infections rising again, there was concern over the risks involved. But despite his comments, the Pope, who does not wear a mask at the audiences, was also seen shaking hands and greeting members of the clergy at the end of the service. Portugal football star Cristiano Ronaldo has tested positive for COVID-19, the Portuguese Football Federation confirmed yesterday. The 35-year-old Yonanto's target man expected to miss Portugal's Nations League match home against Sweden today, the Federation added in the statement. One of soccer's biggest and richest stars, Cristiano Ronaldo, has tested positive for COVID-19. Portugal's Football Federation said in a statement on its website Tuesday. 
The 35-year-old Juventus striker is, quote, well and has no symptoms and is in isolation, according to the Federation. But he'll miss Wednesday's UEFA Nations League game against Sweden. It added that the rest of the Portuguese squad had undergone tests as a result of Ronaldo's positive result, but that they had all tested negative and would be available for the Sweden match. Five times World Player of the Year, Ronaldo appeared in his side's nil-all away draw to France in the Nations League on Sunday and Wednesday's nil-all draw in a friendly at home to Spain. He'll now be unlikely to play in Juventus's Serie A trip to Crotone on Saturday and its Champions League group stage meeting with Dynamo Kiev next Tuesday. And on news back at home, President Gotabe Rajapaksa emphasizes on the need to create a market extending a higher value for the farmer and a reasonable price rate for the consumer. The president made these observations during a discussion held with the Committee on Cost of Living at the Presidential Secretariat this evening. During the discussion, the president pointed out that a higher value for the farmer and a reasonable price rate for the consumer can be facilitated by creating the setting for the farmers across the island to conveniently engage in the trading of their agricultural crops directly to the consumers without the association of the third party entities. The attention of President Gotabe Rajapaksa and Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa was directed to further improve the efficiency of the measures undertaken on the distribution of essential commodities to all parts of the country without any shortages. With due consideration to the current cost of living and difficulties associated with COVID-19, the President removed import duties on essential commodities yesterday. The President instructed relevant authorities to take steps to cultivate coconuts in paddy fields graded as barren lands. The government has already commenced a program to cultivate coconut plants in 50,000 hectares of lands in the country. Head of Presidential Task Force on Economic Revival and Poverty Eradication, Basil Rajapaksa mentioned that an efficient program is currently underway to fulfill the need for commodities including vegetables, fruits and eggs on the divisional basis in accordance to the per respective consumer requirements. Meanwhile, the authorities informed the President that a higher paddy harvest has been attained during this year's Yala and Maha seasons compared to the previous year. The President pointed out the necessity to prepare an efficient program for the purchasing of paddy harvests in future. Minister Bandala Gunavardhana, Mahindananda Aludgamage and Dallas, Douglas Devananda and State Ministers and other officials were present at the meeting. The Employees Trust Fund has handed over a cheque amounting to 90 million rupees to Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa yesterday. The money is to be utilized to present scholarships to students who have qualified in the Grade 5 scholarship examination. The amount is scheduled to be distributed among children of the members of the ETF who have passed the Grade 5 scholarship examination in 2019. Chairman of the ETF, Shriyan De Silva Vijayaratna, has handed over the cheque to the Prime Minister. The funds are to be forwarded to People's Bank for the presentation of scholarships under the first stage among 5,993 students who were qualified in last year's scholarship examination. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa commenced the scholarship fund in the year 1994 when he was functioning as the Minister of Labour. Every year, scholarships valued at 15,000 rupees each are being presented to 9,000 children of the members of the ETF. A meeting between Prime Minister Bahindra Rajapaksa and representatives of the Mother Sri Lanka Institute took place at Temple Trees yesterday. The objective of the meeting was to enlighten the Prime Minister on the progress and future program of the Mother Sri Lanka Institute. The institute is engaged in organizing programs for the well-being of children of preschools and schools as well as of the youth community. Chairperson of the Mother Sri Lanka Institute, Dr. Janaki Kurupu, said programs currently being implemented in 2,600 schools will be expanded in the future. The Mother Sri Lanka Institute has also commenced a program to uplift local entrepreneurs. Accordingly, 5,000 families in eight districts have been provided with business development assistance. 
Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa on this occasion has instructed to prepare a suitable program in collaboration with government ministries to develop local enterprises. Secretary to the Prime Minister, Garmini Senarat, was also present on this occasion. The price relief granted by the government on several essential commodity items has been implemented with effect from today. Chairman of Lanka Satasa Nushad Parera says that relevant items are being sold with restrictions to enable the consumers to receive the benefits. The government has removed import taxes on the essential food items dal, canned fish, bee onions and sugar by taking into consideration of the difficulties being experienced by the general public due to the cost of living and COVID-19 threat. Accordingly, a large size tin of canned fish is being sold for 200 rupees and a kilo of bee onions for 100 rupees. The consumers are also able to purchase a kilo of sugar for 85 rupees. When consumers purchase items including essential commodities from the Satasa, they are allowed to purchase a kilo of dal for 150 rupees. Today, Lanka Satasa has uh, announced and gone along with the government's decision to reduce the cost of living burden to our consumers. We have reduced the prices of canned fish, sugar, uh, dal uh, in accordance with the government's new policy to reduce the cost of living. However, we have put in some conditions so that there is no misuse of this reduction. Uh, for both sugar and canned fish, we have put a restriction of 3 units or 3 kilos. And also for dal, the restriction is 1 kilo at 150 rupees uh, and you have to buy another 500 rupees worth of items. Uh, all these restrictions are to ensure that there is fair play to all consumers and that everyone will be able to have uh, a fair share in this reduced uh, cost of living exercise. The people have extended their gratitude to the government for the relief provided. The Satasa retail outlets have also enabled the consumers to purchase coconuts as well as re at reasonable prices. The Coconut Development Board, the Kronagala Plantation Company and the Chilau Plantation Company have increased supply of coconuts to Colombo. Former Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe has acknowledged before the Presidential Commission yesterday that there had been a clear breakdown in the security divisions at the time of the Easter Sunday terror attack. Vikramasinghe, giving evidence before the Commission for the second day yesterday, further said that all members of the Good Governance Government must take overall responsibility for this terror attack. The former Prime Minister in his testimonies further said that he had not been called to attend the national security meetings from October 2018 until the time of the Easter Sunday attacks. In response to a query made by the State Additional Solicitor General, he said that he was unable to attend every Security Council meeting from 2015 to 2018 due to other commitments. Ranil Vikramasinghe, in response to another query, said that the Security Council should have met at least once in two weeks. At the Security Council meetings, topics such as Islamic extremism were discussed. Intelligence divisions had not informed the Minister of Peace on information pertaining to Zaran, but added that he had told the Security Council to arrest Zaran under the Terrorism Prevention Act. Ranil Vikramasinghe further said he was against banning the ISIS organization as he thought such a move would only encourage extremists. There had been severe discrepancies in the local intelligence services and they were even unaware of the fact that Zaran was conducting classes in Nurelia. He also said that politics may have played a major part in the expansion of extremism, especially in Kalbune and Putuvil in the east. He added that as a government, they should have accepted collective responsibility of these terrorist attacks. A 5,400 kilogram World War II bomb has detonated underwater after Polish Navy divers attempted to make the device safe. The explosive device, nicknamed Toy Boy and capable of causing a small earthquake, was discovered in September last year at the bottom of the shipping channel in Swindwin on the Baltic coast. The biggest World War II bomb ever found in Poland exploded underwater on Tuesday as Navy divers tried to defuse it. It weighed in at nearly 5,400 kilograms, with nearly half of that being explosives. More than 750 people have been evacuated from the area near the Piast Canal in northwest Poland, where the tall boy bomb used by Britain's Royal Air Force was found. 
It was dropped close to the end of the war in an Allied attack on a German cruiser. Following the explosion, 2nd Lieutenant Gregor Lewandowski of the 8th Coastal Defence Flotilla told State News that all divers had returned from the danger zone. He said the object could be considered as neutralised and gave assurances it would no longer pose any further threat. Condé Nast Traveller magazine names Sri Lanka as one of the best countries in the world to visit this year. The US-based travel publication has also ranked Sri Lankan airlines among the top airlines to fly. The CN Traveller Reader's Choice Awards 2020 has announced that Sri Lanka has been ranked as the second most favorite country in the world to visit following a poll conducted by the magazine for its readership. Italy placed on top of the rankings with 94.50 points, followed by Sri Lanka with 93.96 points, beating Portugal, Japan and Greece to reach the top five. Meanwhile, Sri Lankan Airlines has been named the sixth most favorite airline under the Best International Airlines category of the 2020 Reader's Choice Awards of the magazine. Sri Lanka closed its international airports in mid-March following the outbreak of COVID-19, imposing travel restrictions with the aim to mitigate the current situation in the country. In the meantime, the government implemented a program to repatriate Sri Lankan workers stranded abroad. The government authorities are currently engaged in discussions to revive the tourism sector in the country affected by the outbreak of COVID-19. The Colombo High Court has imposed a fine of 12 million rupees on the captain of crude oil tanker MT New Diamond, which caught on fire while on Sri Lankan waters. When the case was taken up today, the Greek captain Stereo Elias pleaded guilty for the charges filed against him in relation to the fire. Subsequently, the Attorney General sought a court order for compensation in a sum of 200 million rupees. However, the court has ruled for the accused to be released after the settlement of the fine of 12 million rupees. While the Deputy Solicitor General, on behalf of the Attorney General, requested for a court order to pay compensation, the judge stated that it would not be granted as issuing such an order would prejudice to both parties. On October 8, the Attorney General filed indictments regarding the oil spill caused by the fire in the ship and the failure to report of the fire in violation of the Section 26 and 38 of the Marine Environment Pollution Authority MEPA Act. Lieutenant Commander of the Sri Lanka Navy, Yoshita Rajapaksa, appeared before the police unit of the Presidential Commission inquiring into political revenge this morning. He arrived to give a statement pertaining to the incident of keeping him in detention for 45 days during the Government of Good Governance on charges of financial fraud and misappropriation of state property on the commencement of the CSN Channel or the Carlton Sports Network Institute. He was subject to torments for a period of nearly five years because, that, because he was a son of a former president, Mahindra Rajapaksa. He further said that the director of the Crime Control Committee of the then government, Ananda Vijaypala, had complained to the Financial Crimes Investigation Division that the Carlton Sports Network was engaged in financial fraud. Yoshita Rajapaksa reiterated he is neither a director nor a shareholder of the Carlton Sports Network. His contribution to end the 30-year-old boy in the capacity of a security forces person were undermined through these allegations. Minister Kehelia Rambukrala says plans are underway to commence 25 media schools on the district level to enhance media literacy amongst school children. He adds that the cooperation of Britain is anticipated in this connection. The minister made these remarks when he met the British High Commissioner in Sri Lanka yesterday. The meeting between British High Commissioner to Sri Lanka, Sarah Halton, and the Media Minister took place at the Media Ministry. Attention has been focused on several fields on this occasion. The Minister has pointed out that children should be provided with an understanding on mass media during their school days itself. He further said that they should be properly enlightened on media ethics. The media the minister rather also said that under the initial stage, steps have been taken to enhance media literacy in the Jaffna district. 
a special meeting between Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit, and Minister of Education Professor G. O. Pelis took place today. His Eminence said on this occasion that cooperation of the entire community, including Catholic churches, will be extended on the educational reforms to be implemented shortly. The Archbishop of Colombo also said that he is prepared to extend his fullest support for the development programs to be unleashed for the well-being of the education sector. State Minister Pial Nishantha was engaged in an observation tour at the Isra Vidyale in Kote, which has been subjected to special attention of the President today. Discussions were conducted on this occasion on the speedy commencement of the stalled development projects of the school. A special Bodhi Puja was held at the Abhyarame Vihare in Narahimpita last evening to invoke the blessings on the world community, including Sri Lankans, confronting the coronavirus pandemic. The Pinkama was organized under the patronage of Chief Incumbent of the Vihare, Venerable Muruttitwe Ananda Thira. Ministers Gamini Lokuge and Dr. Bandhu Lugunavardhana were also present on the occasion. Well, that's it on local news. We'll be back with news overseas.